So tell me when it, when it occurred to you that uh, that a feature film of, of, of your series would be a, a worthwhile endeavor. Well, it was kind of, I think, after the second series. The second series of the TV show got uh, a fair a fair number of viewers. Like, it did very well for the network it was on. And, mm-hmm. um, and we saw, we'd sold quite a lot of DVDs by that point. And our producer had originally started in incredibly small-scale art house films that no one would have seen, but are very well thought of. And um, he sort of said, well, you know, should, you, should we do a film? And we were like, well, maybe we should do a film because we've got this story. We, you know, we all want to do the holiday thing and the thing about the holidays that we can't really do it as an episode. So, and it is, you know, it's part of that sort of rite of passage. It's something that teenage boys do when they're 18 years old in the UK and, and teenage girls. Um, and so we, we knocked out a script relatively quickly and then, uh, and then found it when we made the third series for a year and then went back to it and rewrote and rewrote and redrafted and, and then it was real and it was actually happening before we knew it. <laughs> we, were, uh, we were at the premiere. Wow. But there's, I mean, there has to be some things that the feature film format allows that you could not do on TV with, with these situations and characters, right? Or, well, the funny thing was actually British TV is pretty pretty loose. So we, we actually we didn't in terms of taste and decency, there was nothing we held back on. It was all you know nothing we held back on TV. There was nothing like like that that we couldn't do on the uh, of you know that we were doing especially for the film. It was more just about um, depth of character and emotional highs and lows and scale and scope and stuff that we got to play with a bit more. I think that when we when we made the TV show, we we're very aware that we're doing a half-hour comedy. It's a sitcom. It's not a comedy drama. It's not a sort of drama. It's not a documentary. It's not a soap. You know, so we try and keep the jokes coming relatively thick and fast. Whereas it was quite nice to let some scenes breathe a bit more and let the characters mm-hmm. maybe have a little bit more depth than um, we normally would. So that sort of sense of scale was, was very enjoyable to play with. I would think so too. And, and But plus with a series, I mean, just the nature of a series, you, you're able to live with these characters for an extended period of time and grow comfortable yeah. with them. But in a yeah. film, particularly when you're presenting a film to many people that might not be aware of the series, yeah. um, you have to establish these characters fast. And, and I would think you have to have a very firm st- story arc. Yeah. Was that challenging to kind of devise for this? Um, it, it sort of wasn't really. I think because, uh, you know, we sort of had a head start with really. I think we were very lucky to to be in a situation where we knew the characters very well and we knew what the actors could do that was really funny and where, where their strengths lay. And also, we kind of, you know, we knew that... We, one of the things we always tried to do as a series was trying to keep it as realistic as we could, you know, while still making it very funny. And so the idea was that, you know, great big things didn't really happen. You know, it was, it was actually kind of about small things, like one of them's mother goes away for the weekend. You know, you know, one day they decide not to go to school, one day they go on a field trip. You know, it's the sort of smaller things. And it felt for us like a sort of, although going abroad was a bigger thing, in fact, the the story arc, such as it was, was really, let's go abroad, let's try and have fun, let's try and meet some girls. And so that, that was relatively simple, you know, and that just meant that we could sort of try, hopefully, uh, fill it full of jokes. And... Um, in, you know, in terms of the characters, it, 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 it was it was very exciting to that people who had never seen the TV series thought that we'd thought, still loved the characters in the way that people had who had seen the TV series had. So that was that was edifying because that was certainly something that we tried to do. Yeah, how truthful is this to your own experiences as an adolescent? Terrifyingly, <laughs> terrifyingly close <laughs> to both Damon and myself. I, I, I often say that actually, if it hadn't been for the in between us, my life would have just simply been a series of embarrassing failures. But luckily, I've managed, we've managed to spin that into um, a, a job because w- without, without the in-between, it would have been literally me and Damon just living out terribly embarrassing failure um, after embarrassing failure. Um, one of the funny things for us was that when we knew we were writing the film, we mentioned to people we were doing a film set abroad, they would volunteer their own stories from these sort of trips they had and stuff. And almost all of them were entirely inappropriate and unusable because they were so <laughs> horrific and disgusting to the point where there's a couple of quite close friends of mine that I now look at in an entirely different way because mm. I cannot believe some of the stuff they grew up to. Well, I guess that's why it's so popular uh, because obviously it's very funny, but it, it's it's something that everyone can kind of relate to. I mean, we've all had the very awkward, uncomfortable stage in our in our lives yeah. a lot of that is expressed here 
I mean, do you think that's the main key to its success? It's people are relating to it in that way. I think it is. Yeah, I think it is. I think I think you know the, the actors bring those characters to life in such a sort of weirdly likable and non-threatening way. And, and I think most people I know always say to me, "Oh, I knew someone like Jay, or I was like Simon, or I was like Will, or I know someone exactly like Neil." And it seems that it, that was deliberate at the beginning. The idea was that you know we called it the in between us because we felt like you know, in the press and often in TV and film, what you see represented is the, the cool kids or the real nerds. And we just thought there is a whole sort of strata there of people who also do funny things and say funny things and, you know, fuck up along the way. That, mm-hmm. that perhaps more people were related than being the real sort of, you know, bottom of the social scale or the really cool, you know, Danny Zuko's, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, I, I'm curious to know if you're finding... Or, or what is most surprising to you about American audience reaction to it? Because now you're you're promoting it to to this audience here in the states. Is it different at all, or is is it very similar? Yeah, I think there's um, I think people aren't coming with quite the same preconceptions, which is nice. I think that in the UK, when we first announced we were making a film, most people I think thought it was quite a bad idea, and they were worried about how we'd string it out and what would happen. And a lot of people also didn't like the show and felt that they, they would hate the film and actually hopefully a lot of those you know preconceptions were changed and so it's quite nice to be you know talking about the film in, a, in purely on its own terms and saying well look it's just a, you know it's a comedy film about these four characters and so broadly everyone's been incredibly nice and incredibly positive so far so uh hopefully hopefully it'll uh it'll, it'll go well i mean we, we did we did take it sort of around the world last year in, in australia uh where we'll say it, it did very well in australia but the main sort of grand dame of uh, film critics in Australia described it as, I think, the reason Britain lost the empire, which, is, <laughs> which I thought was sort of brilliant, but also a little bit harsh. I think I, that's the moment you know when you've made it. I would frame I that did. review. If it gets under somebody's skin like that, you've done your job. That's a good, yeah, I that's did a think, good I, thing. Yeah, I was, I was definitely like, well, she, didn't, she wasn't ambivalent about it. She really, really hated it more than anything <laughs> Well, I, I I loved it, and there's a note. Thank of you so much. Of, there's a note of kind of the bittersweet, uh, yeah. in, in, in the movie, and I, I'm wondering was was there a moment in your life when you kind of felt that that stage of your adolescence was coming to an end, and you were officially kind of in the adult world? I think both Damon and myself are hugely emotionally uh, retarded and stunted, so actually. <laughs> You know that kind of immaturity has, uh, has, has has stood us in good stead. There was definitely a moment though when we were shooting the film where we were getting towards the end of the shoot. I was about two days from the end. I was suddenly like, "Oh shit, this is like we're stopping this. This is going to be the last thing we do with these guys who've been a huge part of my life for the past five years." And you know, all real success I've had in in the industry has come from these guys. And you know, we're all friends and we all get on really well. And it was a, it was a very strange. It was a strange moment, actually. That was so. Again, it came. It came twenty years later than one would have expected it, and it came mm. from not from, you know, my teenage friends, but from the sort of work colleagues I've made. Um, and that that was that was oh, yes. Yeah, so I had a, I definitely had that bittersweet moment, of thinking, oh god, is this it? Is this going to be the last time we all get to try and push Joe Thomas into a swimming pool or hold his head underwater? <laughs> are are you? I read that there were plans for another film. You yeah, that was. That. Yeah, it's taken us a year, basically today. Uh, yesterday, Dave and I sort of started talking about it properly because someone leaked something to the press. But yeah, we've been we've been talking for about a year about about doing it, and um, I think we're getting towards a stage where we feel like we've got a story that would be, you know, worthy of the characters and of the name and everything. And we we, we don't want to do anything just for the sake of it, but we do right. we do miss them terribly. So that moment where I was like, oh god, this can be end. We see if we can just. Uh, we can we can hold that for a little bit longer, hold that off for a bit longer before we never see them all again. Absolutely, and and when I when I read that news, I thought, well, it must be that you've you've found a way to continue these characters' arcs uh, because I, I mean I'm I'm sure you don't want to repeat the same movie you've already no, done. No, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. It'll be no, it's definitely. Um, it's definitely different, hopefully. Again, I, it goes very early stages, yeah. And again, I, I don't know if we'll be able to get all the guys together because they're all so busy and stuff, but hopefully we'll do it. And I think there's a, there's a great will from all of us to do something. And, and I think we've got... It, it has genuinely taken us about a year to come to a point where we think, oh, actually, that isn't the same story. And it probably is quite mm. funny. And it's, it, it, hopefully it might work, but still a long way off. 